Hey! We've been traveling in our bus all the way through the Four Corner States. We picked up my daughter Dana in Arizona and now we finally made it to Carlsbad Caverns way down south in New Mexico. Just the water? Yeah, that's it. It is 378. <laughs> I think we're at the visitor center, so this is what it looks like so far. It was quite a climb to get up here. It's flat everywhere, and then this area right here turns into a little mountainous area. We had to climb 1,500 feet to get here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was really cute. Here. <laughs> okay, so FYI, when you come here, you're supposed to make reservations. We lucked out because it's November, they weren't overcrowded and they were able to get us in anyway, but just know you have to call and make reservations when you're going to be here. But we got our ticket to go in and we got our awesome literature that we always get. So we're ready to go. But he said that it's 90% humidity in there, so our map might be a little soggy by the time we get out. 56 degrees, but 90% humidity? That sounds so weird, doesn't it? As per tradition, we found our Medallion. This is a cool one. It's a really cool one that's so unique. Yeah, but well, someday I'll get a staff to put them all on. <laughs> <laughs> we are from here. We went all around here and came back here. Unguided, I hope they have signs with arrows. Something to think about before you go into the cave. Alrighty folks, welcome to Carlsbad Caverns National Park. All three of you lovely <laughs> folks. Uh, my name is Ranger Tristan and before I let you guys into the cave, I do want to go over some very basic rules. Now these rules are very easy to follow, but they are self-explanatory in the sense that these are things that make sense. The first rule, and by far the most important rule, don't touch the cave. Our hands have oils and our fingers have bones which cause permanent 
irreparable damage to the cave. We want to make sure to limit that damage completely, ideally to zero. Along the same lines, uh, don't do any cartwheels over the railings. <laughs> so funny that um, he looks at you. Don't don't jump out. Don't jump into the pools. <laughs> Nothing crazy like that. You need to explain. Wait, are you a, a, a gymnast? Kind of. A gymnast. And we've been doing like jumps and leaps in front of the signs yeah. everywhere we go. And well, you can so do funny. a jump as long as you're going to land on the trail. <laughs> um, do not cartwheel off the railings into the bottomless pit. I do not want to do the paperwork. So please. Please be safe as you travel right. to the cave. Make sure you also do not eat any food in the cave. The only thing you're allowed to consume is water because crickets, turns out, don't eat Cheetos and they don't eat tobacco and they don't eat Gatorade. So make sure you just have water with you unless it's for any emergency, uh, diabetic or anything like that. Uh -huh. Make sure that you're also keeping your voices down to a whisper as the cave is incredibly echoey and speaking at this volume everybody would hear me and uh -huh. we don't want that so please keep your voice to a whisper and then the last thing i want to go over is that this trail is an 800 foot descent 80 stories pretty steep in some spots and can be somewhat slippery so just keep your footing use the railings you know you won't have to you're not going to get slipped right off the trail or anything but use the railings uh, and please make sure that before you go you use the porta potties if you need to because it's going to be an hour before you hit the bathroom that's in the cave that amazes me to this day that there is a bathroom 800 feet below the ground but you are welcome to use it once you get there but until you get there make sure you use this bathroom please do not use the cave as a bathroom <laughs> we emphasize this because it happens almost every day oh, that what? somebody does oh, and God. unfortunately that is a biohazard that we do oh. have to clean up and Sometimes it's me, hopefully today it's Gabe, and not me, <laughs> so that I don't have to deal with it. But hopefully, like last couple days, no one's done it, but it's, it's we tell every single person because it's pretty gross. That's crazy that yeah. people would even do that. And sometimes it's right on the trail. So anyway, wow. um, if you guys, uh, you guys have any immediate questions before I let you de descend to the beautiful minds, mystical cave. Oh, what is the temperature in there? Oh, uh, it's going to be about 56 degrees this consistently. There will okay. be times where it hits 59, uh, but you're not going to notice. Right. This is the amphitheater, and right below the amphitheater is the entrance to the cave. Not just any amphitheater, it's the bat viewing amphitheater. That's right. What do they call it? The back bat? It's bat viewing amphitheater. Oh, I thought it had a different name. Or something like that. But they sit here at night when the bats come rushing out of here, and they come out of here in hordes. And... Uh, but you're not allowed to use cameras or anything to videotape itself. Yeah, it interferes it's, with their little bat signals. That's right, so it's just a viewing experience. Bat flight, that what, that's what it's called. It's the bat flight area. They left that out of the little, uh, the little thing where they talk about... Not like, in the pamphlet. Not in the pamphlet that you could get radiated.
Hopefully there's an elevator to leave this place <laughs> because the climb down was steep and treacherous. I'm just here for the free ride. <laughs> 75 stories to the top. Look at that. It's counting the feet down right now behind you. Oh, cool. That's cool. It's counting in feet instead of stories. How interesting. I've never actually gone up 75 stories. And if I did ever go up 75 stories, you know it's not going to be a direct shot. <laughs> we walked out the other day from, I don't know, all the way up. Did you? Wow. Yeah, they ran out of power, so we, we had no choice. Out. Oh. We had to, yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. It happened. Like two hours. Oh, oh my, my God. gosh. Wow. Thanks for telling us after we're already done with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Once we got into the elevator, he tells us. The part where the power goes out, that was special. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, here's the problem. How convenient. It is very convenient. Ready for this? Here we go. Oh, back up. There it is. Carlsbad Caverns National Park. We forgot to bring our passport book into the National Park with us, so we had to take the scrap of paper route. <laughs> Just a word of advice. The snack bar inside the cave has been closed for a while for COVID, so we had to wait until we got through the entire cave, which took hours when we were stopping to take so many pictures. So me and Dana were completely hangry. We had to come to the snack bar and have chips and soda while we wait for Mike to activate this park for his POTA thing that he does. You know, ham radio nerd. And thanks for hunting me down. Have a good day, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, 73. Mike's Whiskey nerding Juliet. out again. Whiskey 5, Oscar Hotel Juliet. I have you 5-6 uh, at uh, Carlsbad Caverns. Copy the 5-6, thank you. I have you 5 and 7, South Louisiana. Good signal. It's amazing to me with the level of technology we have now with cell phones that people are still into ham radio. <laughs> right? <laughs> Kilo Oscar for Indio, no, Indian but I November, get it. Quebec. The I cool about thing about at, ham radio uh, is that you don't have to pay a monthly fee for service like you do for a cell phone. So if all communications it, Kilo Oscar for, went down, Mike would still be able to communicate with people. That, that is cool. Right? All it right. Thank you, sir. 73. It that way. It's funny, though. CQ Parks <laughs> on the air. CQ Parks on the air. Kilo 1, November Golf Zulu. Hey, you guys little flashback from the future here. <laughs> we just wanted to tell you a little bit about what was so unique and challenging about making this video in a very dark cave. Yeah, unfortunately, like if you were a film crew or something like that, you'd probably be bringing lights and stuff with you to film, but um, you know, that's not something you can do in a cave. There's other people. This wasn't like, yeah. you know, some kind of corporate thing. And so. the average camera just doesn't like pick up enough light to be able to show anything in the cave. If we had just tried to film it, all you would see is mostly blackness. Yeah, well, just like a little bit of light over yeah. here, a little bit of light over yeah. there. Yeah, you wouldn't have ever been able to see our faces. You <clears throat> wouldn't have been able to hear our voices because we had to whisper the whole time we were in the cave. So our only choice was to do a photo slideshow because this guy right here knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically I was using like a 10 millimeter lens um, with uh, like 30 second exposure. So super wide angle lens with uh, uh, like, I think I was using F8 with 30 second exposures at ISO 400. So that was giving, getting a lot of light. So you could really see the detail and so you could right. see the areas they were trying to light as well as around the areas yeah, that they yeah. were, weren't really lighting. Yeah, so some of the pictures are a little bit deceiving because when you look at them, there's this big golden glow and it looks like the cave is just well lit and glowing in there, but in actuality, that wasn't the case. Some of the other pictures really show how dim it was in there with just some yeah. lighting at the features. And for a long time in between features, the trail would be very dim and sometimes mm -hmm. wet and it was 
you really felt the cave experience yeah there. yeah like when you're walking through there you're walking pretty much in the dark with just enough yeah. light to see most most of the time where you're walking yeah and uh but i wanted to be able to really bring out the uh the structures of the cave and stuff you just even with your eyes can't see yeah. and so the the long exposures really brought that out and then i wanted to portray the scale and the scale is really brought out when you see all the paths yeah, that we're walking through. Yeah, that path was like six feet wide, at least. It wasn't a narrow trail. So when you realize that that's a wide path, it makes you realize how big the area is. Yeah, it's a massive cavern. Really yeah. cool to go through. Definitely yeah. worth going in there. And if you have your little fancy parks pass, it didn't cost us anything to get in yeah. and go see this whole thing. So it was really yeah. a neat place to go and experience. You, like... I don't know. I don't know if we'd go back. Um, I kind of feel like I would, only because if we were passing through, we'd probably go back. I felt like I didn't. I didn't really know what to expect, and um, the trail seemed longer to me. They say that it's only a one point two five mile walk in there, but I I don't buy it because my legs and my hip joints were aching like i was so tired and so hungry by the end of that whole cave experience yeah. i was ready to just go so i feel like if i went back to do it again i would go in with a full stomach i would be prepared i would be able to pace myself and i don't know i could probably do it better a second time around but it was fun it was great don't get me wrong the whole cave experience was rich it was exciting. Yeah, it's super cool. Like the scale is off the hook. You can't even believe it. Yeah. When you go and see, you're looking up at most of the features and they're enormous. Yeah. And the, the caverns are huge and wide and it, it so, is really cool. You're so deep underground. The whole 80 stories underground blows my mind. Right. It's yeah. creepy, right? When you go in, like you saw the opening sequence where we were walking down that thing. We just continue to walk down and down for a long, down. long, 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 long time. It was scary. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that if you had to walk out of there, yeah, like, like the elevator guy said, yeah, it took them two hours to get out. Oh yeah, you'd have to take breaks because a lot of the uphill, it's not like this, you know, slight incline. It's like steep, steep yeah. uphills a lot of the way yeah, as you're going through that. Yeah, and yeah. So, it yeah, it's crazy. cool though. Definitely yeah. worth going to see. And if, you, if you're if you worried that the trail might be too much for you, it's also important to note that there's some little shortcuts. Like you don't really have to go all the way to the end of the cave. You can go to kind of a halfway point and go through a loop and come back again. Or you can kind of create your own cave adventure because it's not a guided tour you're just free to go at your own pace for as long or as little as you want mm -hmm. and you could ride the elevator down and back up again i think if that yeah if you that can i think you have to an issue for you um i think you just have to get permission. when you make your reservations yeah. you need to specify you want to take the elevator down yeah, yeah and honestly like in retrospect looking back like most of the really fantastic pictures that were taken were done in the lower cavern where you would go down and then do the loop versus on the way down I did take a lot of pictures uh, and they were cool but they they weren't the same as what we got when you were at the bottom. Yeah so in other words if you took the elevator down you wouldn't be missing that much you would just be missing all that steep craziness. Yeah. So yeah. But it was fun it was fun to do the whole thing and, and I would do it again for sure. <laughs> So anyway, thank you guys for coming along on our crazy cave adventure this week. And uh, we have some more adventures for you coming up. Right. So come back and see us next week. You'll see how Mike shaved his beard. Didn't he look like 20 years younger? There's a reason for this. And you'll see it in the future videos. So right. stay tuned for us. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. Uh, that helps us a lot. Yeah. And uh, hitting the like button also huge for absolutely. our channel. We need all the help we can get right now in order to keep us on the road. So also check out our Patreon, check out our Etsy. We have all kinds of goodies and fun stuff for you guys out there. All right, you guys. We'll see you next Thursday. See you then. Bye-bye.